Hey everybody, Rob Maurer here, and today we are going through both Q2 and full year delivery and production estimates for Tesla, and whether or not Tesla can still achieve their annual delivery guidance of 500,000 plus vehicles. If you are an audio only listener, I would definitely recommend YouTube for this episode. There are a lot of numbers and graphs, so I'll do my best for audio, but that'll make it easier. The link for that is in the show notes. Quick shameless plug, which I don't do very often. I do think this is pretty valuable information. I put a lot of time and effort and work into this, and I put it out there for free. If you do find it valuable as well, please consider supporting on Patreon. That's what makes it possible for me to do this. And it's actually less than 2% of our listeners that make that happen. All right, so let's get into it. There's going to be a lot to look at here. Don't worry, we're going to walk through it and we're not going to talk about every single box here. I think it'll be pretty easy to follow. We're going to start with production and we're mostly going to talk about production. In my opinion, that is what matters. Tesla as a company is production constrained. There may be short term demand constraints that pop up at certain times or for certain products in certain factories, but as a whole production constraint is the operating thesis. So production is where we'll start. That'll trickle down to deliveries. We will talk a little bit more about demand later on. First off, I want to orientate people with how I'm looking at this data. On the left, I have various periods of time in the rows. And then in the columns, I have total production from Fremont and Shanghai combined. Then I have a split for Fremont and Shanghai. So that's the total production over that period of time. Then in addition to that, in the center, I have the production per calendar week. And then over on the right, production per calendar day. These rates are critical for us to focus on because there have been periods of time where production has been shut down, both at Fremont and in Shanghai. So what I've spent a lot of time looking at is production rates over time, excluding those shutdown periods. To the best of my knowledge, we know that Shanghai was shut down for Chinese New Year plus coronavirus from January 25th through February 9th, and then from May 1st to May 9th. Those dates in May were for a Labor Day holiday plus an extension of that shutdown for whatever rumor you choose to believe, whether that was for part shortages, which Tesla denied, or for retooling, or just the general schedule. What's important for today is that it was shut down. That'll impact our rates. Our starting point is the numbers that Tesla gives us. So each quarter we know their total production. And then specifically in Q1, we know that Elon tweeted on March 9th that they had just produced their 1 millionth vehicle. So that gave us another anchor point, showing us that Tesla had produced roughly 81,000 vehicles so far in Q1 at that point. So those are our Tesla-related anchors. Those are reported here in gray. Then we seem to have pretty good reporting on production out of Shanghai. Those numbers for each month are here in orange, so we can be pretty highly confident in those in my opinion, but not as confident as we can be from the Tesla reported numbers, of course. Those data points allow us to further break down the numbers with some pretty good estimates, so those breakdowns are here in blue. Then forward-looking, my forecasts are in yellow. So first, let's just look at weekly production from Fremont with no exclusions. Back in Q1 of 2017, Fremont was producing about 2,000 vehicles per week, The next year in 2018 in Q1, it was at about 2,700. And then in 2019 in Q1, all the way up to 6,000, obviously Model 3, hitting its stride at that point in time. Tesla then kept ramping throughout 2019, ending with Q4's production rate of 7,900 vehicles from Fremont per week. So that brings us to Q1 of this year. Tesla produced 102,700 vehicles. About 16,700 of those were from Shanghai, if those reports are accurate. That means about 86,000 vehicles were produced in Fremont over the 13 weeks of the quarter. That's about 6,600 vehicles per week, but of course, we know we had shutdown time. If we exclude those days, those final nine days of the quarter when Fremont was not operating, so the last 10% of the quarter, if we're looking from a purely calendar day perspective, then the shutdown excluded weekly production rate from Fremont and Q1 was about 7,300 vehicles per week. Now, this is interesting because as I just said, Q4, Tesla was producing about 7,900 vehicles per week out of Fremont. So even excluding that shutdown, Tesla's production was down, and we know that Tesla added Model Y production during the quarter. That was at least 2,700 vehicles based on what Tesla confirmed in the Q1 shareholder letter. That means Model Y was at least 230 per day, meaning S, X, and 3 production out of Fremont was about 7,100 per day at best. That means even excluding the shutdown, which makes the data comparable then to Q4, Tesla's production rate for the S, X, and 3 combined out of Fremont was down 10% quarter over quarter Q1 from Q4. I was actually pretty surprised to find this because, as we talked about when I went through my Q1 delivery estimates, I felt Tesla was in a pretty good spot demand-wise for two reasons. They hadn't lowered prices, and they were very adamant about keeping Fremont open. This shows, though, that they were not producing vehicles at the full rate that they were in Q4. That drop in production rate came from Model 3 in Fremont rather than SNX. If we look at the quarter-over-quarter comparisons, SNX production for Q1 was down 14% compared to Q4. With the last 10% of the quarter being shut down, that kind of makes sense. I think that normalizes what the baseline of expectation for Model 3 should have been if there were no other variables at play. But Model 3 sequentially was actually down quite a bit more than that. 
Model 3 and Y production out of Fremont combined was about 70.6 thousand vehicles. We know that because we're backing out the Shanghai numbers. If we then assume that Model Y production was 2,700, which it had to have been at minimum, then we're looking at Model 3 production in Q1 out of Fremont at about 67,900 vehicles, down 22% quarter over quarter, when we have that baseline of S and X only down 14%. If Model 3 production in Fremont had only been down 14%, they would have produced about 75,000 Model 3s from Fremont in the quarter, or about 6,700 more than they actually did. After spending a lot of time thinking about this and what the reason for that might be, I think there are three explanations that may be reasonable. The first is that Tesla was starting production for Model Y. Maybe that distracted some of their resources from Model 3 production, meaning they couldn't quite produce at the rate that they did back in Q4. I do think that's plausible. Tesla denied that that would have any impact though on Model 3 production when they were asked that question specifically on a previous earnings call. So I'm not totally convinced it's that simple. The next is the bull triggering D word of demand. With Shanghai Model 3 ramping up, Tesla may have pulled back production on Fremont Model 3, and there were headwinds in Q1 with tax credit expirations and things that we've talked about. So I think that could be plausible. The counter argument against that is that Zach on the earnings call said that they exited Q1 with their highest order backlog ever. However, that could be easily explained by a lot of demand in China specifically, and a lot of demand for the Model Y. That's not the same thing as saying that North American and European demand for the Model 3 were at all-time highs. If production of the Fremont Model 3 in Q1 was throttled back a little bit for demand reasons, it's not something I'm concerned about. Again, there were so many headwinds in Q1, and it's already a seasonally weak quarter, but it is at least worth considering and discussing. The third possibility is that benchmark that we used for SNX being down 14%. Maybe that's a bad benchmark. Maybe they were actually ramping up Model SNX production beyond what it was at in Q4. That is possible. Tesla in the Q1 letter listed the capacity for SNX in Fremont at 90,000 vehicles, that's 22,500 per quarter. And back in Q4, Tesla produced about 18,000 SNX, so there was still room for them to ramp that up. I don't think that would fully explain the disparity in sequential declines between SNX and 3, but it could explain part of it. The reason I'm going so in detail on this point is because Model 3 Fremont production is one of the biggest unknowns that we have for the balance of the year. If that ramps back up to Q4 levels or above and Q1 is an outlier, you end up with a significantly different delivery number for the year than if Tesla were to hold it steady, or if it were to decline as Shanghai Model 3 ramps up and as Model Y ramps up. Tesla would of course be forgiven if it did decline, it would be totally justifiable, still fine for the long-term outlook, but it is important to understand. I am very bullish on Tesla, but right now on that specific angle, I'm not sure. So what I am doing in my forecasting here is basically holding production steady for Model S, Model X, and Model 3 from Fremont for the rest of the year at right around that Q1 level, so about 7,150 per week. Balancing all the knowns and unknowns, that's where I am comfortable. I understand the arguments that that may be conservative. There's certainly upside there based on Tesla's production rates in Q4. That is my best guess though, it's not just being conservative for conservatism's sake. Q2 I am approaching differently, I'm anchoring on that rate, but I am discounting it for the restart of production. We know that really began on May 11th, maybe even a couple days before, and I've heard reports that Tesla's either at you know 40% or a few hundred vehicles per day. So for that first week, I have them around 2,000 vehicles for the full week. The second week, I'm at about 4,500. The third week, about 6,000. And then for June, I have them almost getting back to the Q1 production rate. I'm still anticipating just some small limitations from the social distancing and things like that. So I'm at an average of 6,900 for June. So that sets our numbers for Model 3, Model S, Model X from Fremont. But of course we need to add Model Y and then Gigafactory Shanghai as well. For Model Y, we know in Q1 Tesla produced more than 2,700 vehicles. If we look back at the Model 3 ramp up, this is something I've talked about a lot. In the quarter that Tesla first produced 2,500 Model 3s, that was when the switch flipped for Model 3 production. And over the following three quarters, they produced more than 90,000 Model 3s. So we could have used that as a benchmark for Model Y and maybe Model Y production for 2020 could have been 100,000 vehicles. The shutdown makes that more difficult, but we can still use that logic. Fremont will shut down for 50 days, so about seven weeks. I think we're all hopeful that Tesla was still able to make some progress on the Model 3 production ramp up during that period of time, but let's say they didn't make much progress and we just shift the time back by about seven weeks, and we look at that Model 3 ramp up that went from 2,500 units to about 10,000 to about 29,000 to 53,000. We can use numbers like that for Model Y, maybe a bit of discounting for the time shifting, but maybe a bit added in because well, it's Model Y, this is an iterative product off the Model 3 for Tesla, and it's not their first attempt at volume manufacturing like the Model 3 was. So smashing up all of that logic together, I'm at about 6,000 vehicles factoring in the shutdown for Q2 for Model Y, 
that's kind of my take on that 10,000 quarter, which was the second quarter following 2,500 units for the Model 3, but then discounted for the shutdown. Then the next quarter, Q3 for the Model Y, I have that at 30,000 vehicles. So actually showing the Model Y then to begin outpacing the Model 3 ramp. But then in Q4, I'm at about 45,000 vehicles, which would trail behind the 53,000 vehicles on a similar time frame for the Model 3. And the reason for that, frankly, is I'm just not sure what the capacity plans for the Model Y at Fremont are. When we get to this future point in Q4, we would be three to six months away from Model Y being produced in both Gigafactory Shanghai and Gigafactory Berlin. So the ramp in Fremont may not be as aggressive as it was back then for Model 3. So that's why at that point I have the ramp slowing down a little bit. Putting all those pieces together for Fremont then, for Q2, I'm at 48,000 vehicles. For Q3, 124,000 vehicles. For Q4, 139,000 vehicles. Those weekly rates, again, excluding the shutdown that we know in Q2, would be about 6,500 vehicles from Fremont in Q2, about 9,400 in Q3, and about 10,600 in Q4. If we plot those rates for Fremont on a chart in blue here, and we compare them to the historical averages, it looks like it fits pretty well with the overall trend. And if we compare to the Model 3 ramp up, you can see a pretty similar shape forming, but a bit shallower for those reasons we just discussed. So overall feeling pretty good with those Fremont forecasts with I think the biggest wild card being what Tesla does with Model 3 production at Fremont as these other products ramp up. So let's move on to Shanghai then. Again, here we had shutdowns in January, in February, in May. So again, I'm excluding those shutdowns from these weekly rates. And when you do that, you can see a very clear ramp up from Shanghai that I think we can be pretty confident in projecting. Excluding shutdowns in January, Tesla was at about 800 per week. In February, about 1400 per week. In March, about 2300 per week. In April, about 2600 per week. We know that the goal then is to ramp up to about 4,000 per week sometime in June. When Tesla puts those targets out there, remember though, there is always a bit of downtime. We're still not at 3,000 per week in April, for example, even though there were reports of that being achieved in March. So you've got to discount that a little bit, but again, excluding shutdown periods of time for Q2, I am at 3,000 per week. And then in Q3, I'm at about 4,000 per week, just below at 3,900, and Q4 at 4,200. So with that May shutdown, that comes out to 35,000 for Shanghai for Q2, 51,000 for Q3, and about 55,000 for Q4. Q4, again, we may be a bit conservative here. I wouldn't actually be surprised to see that increased by maybe 10% or so, up to about 60,000. All right, so putting all of that together, for those of you that are still listening, that puts me at 83,000 for Q2, 175,000 produced for Q3, and 194,000 for Q4, 555,000 vehicles produced for 2020. After walking through all that, my confidence is quite high that Tesla can produce that many vehicles this year, assuming there are no other significant shutdowns, if there is a second wave or something like that. And with production at that level, they would still be able to easily deliver 500,000 vehicles, beating their guidance despite the macro environment situation. Generally, when I'm making projections like this, it's a thought exercise, and I always discuss the upsides and downsides, but I will go out on a limb on this one and say that I do think that Tesla will beat guidance this year. Let's wrap things up then with Q2. As I said, 83,000 is what I'm currently projecting from a production standpoint. We know that Tesla began Q2 with an inventory pool of about 30,000 vehicles that they can pull from. There's a lot of uncertainty around demand for Q2, but I think it'll be there for Tesla. I think they'll draw that inventory down by five to 10,000 vehicles, which coincidentally leads me to an estimate that worked well last quarter of right around 88,000 vehicles. We'll revisit that for the end of the quarter, but right now, 88,000 delivered, 83,000 produced. Those are my numbers. A lot of numbers here today, but hopefully that was valuable. Please let me know what you think in the comments of my estimates and share yours as well. If you appreciate this work, again, please consider checking out patreon.com slash Tesla Daily Podcast. Make sure you're subscribed, signed up for notifications, and following me on Twitter at Tesla Podcast. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Friday, May 22nd episode of Tesla Daily. Thank you.